All right, welcome back. Now we're going to understand how the software works. So I hope you have downloaded and installed the software. And once you open the software, you will see this screen. So the first thing is you have to first define the properties. Okay, so on the left side, you will see project properties and there's a cross because it is asking for protection, which must be selected. It's a must. <laughs> so here, if you want to have read and write protection to your PLC program or the application, you can make it active and then you can define the password. If you don't want any protection, you can make it inactive. Similarly, for the write protection, you can make it active or inactive. So make sure you select either active, write the password, or inactive. For this videos, for this tutorial videos, I do not need any protection, so I make it inactive. Once you select that, you have to click on active, uh, apply. Maybe I resize this window so that you see things not hiding behind my camera. So it's okay. So here you can click on apply and this settings are applied now. So this was the first thing you need to do. And if you want, you can also add some information about yourself, your address, email, uh, country, or information about your company. If it's a company project, you can put the logo of your company so that it's quite unique when somebody's opening a project, he knows to which company it belongs. Some project information, the name of the project, description, photo, maybe I can write here, training, project one description you can add a photo the photo you can add of your machine where you are uploading this program then you have project protection just making the changes this i already made inactive so these kind of things you can define in project properties now the next and very important part is configuration in configuration you define which plc you are working on so if you see my my plc this is my plc and the plc is this one, TM221CE16R. That's the PLC I'm working with. And this PLC is by default coming here, TM221M16R. So if you have a PLC that you know you wanna work with, drag and drop here. And it will ask you if you want to modify that, I will say yes. So your PLC controller is updated. So it's easily drag and drop and you have your PLC controller here. If you have extra IO modules, you can also do that from here. For example, here you can see digital IO module and I can open this one and I have first digital IO module which is 16 channel which means 16 inputs working on 24 VDC so I can drag and drop here and this is my IO module so it's very easy drag and drop and once you drag and drop you will go to the inputs and you have the addressing of your inputs if I select my controller I have digital inputs starting from I0.0 to I0.8 I told you nine inputs if you select your card, it starts from I1.0 to I1.15, 16 more inputs. Because I don't have it in my physical PLC, I don't need it, I will remove that. So that's the configuration. So in configuration, again, you can write or uh, define the symbols for your digital inputs from here. So this is the address. So for example, my first input is EM stop. I can write here EM stop. Second input is push button. So I can write push or I can just write PB. And O, it's an end of push button. And the next one is P, B, and O. This is actually the same. So I put here two and I put here one. Then I have P, B, and C, and C push button. Then I have another P, B, and O three. And then I have toggle. If you have sensors, you can write the name of your sensor. I'm just writing it just for the sake of understanding how to use symbols. So these are the addresses, then you have symbol. And if you want to use it by filtering, it has a filtering of three millisecond noise. So it will filter all the noise. And if you want to latch it, if you want to run and stop it, we will come to that later on as well. Then you have digital outputs. So it is asking to apply the changes. So whenever you switch to another, another tab, it will ask you to apply the changes, which you can do from here as well. I apply the changes. Similarly, outputs, you can write a symbol. Q0.0 is my first output connected to red indicator. So I will just write red here. This one is yellow. And this one is green. You notice that when I press enter, the lowercase changes to uppercase. So in Schneider PLC, in this software, lowercase and uppercase are exactly the same. There is no difference between that. So I added three outputs. And it will tell you if it is used by which uh, uh, POU is using it. And the status, you can see here, status alarm. Fallback value is zero. Fallback value means if the PLC goes to a error status or a halt status, what should be the value of the output? It is by default false, okay? 
Then you have analog inputs, again, applying changes. Analog inputs are addressed here, and these are the symbols. So the first analog input I will connect. It's not already connected yet to a potentiometer, so I can write a simple pot. And then you can see the voltage range 0 to 10 volt. It's not minus 10 to plus 10, which is in most of the PLCs as well. But here is 0 to 10 volt. And then you have minimum and maximum value, which will come when you convert the voltage from 0 to 10 volt. If it's 0, the value will be 0, the decimal value. If it's 10 volt, it will be 1000. So you can easily do the scaling. Filter level, filter unit, this will come later when we talk about analog inputs. Similarly, you have high speed counters in which you can define the symbols. So we will not, not use it now. We will use it when we connect encoders. And then you have uh, Ethernet. In Ethernet, we define the IP address. This is very important. Now, the PLC, which is on my table, already has an IP address defined for it. So in this case, I can write, I can select fixed IP address and I can write the IP address, which I know. 192.168.0.222. So that's the IP address, which I already have in my PLC. I can define it in my project as well. If I don't know the IP address of my PLC, and if it's connected in your network, what you can do is you can find out using some softwares like Advanced IP Scanner. And in this software, you can just click on Scan. And if your PLC is within the range of 192.168.0.1.254, if you know at least that, it will populate the, uh, all the devices and you can see your PLC coming up here shortly. I will show you very soon. And then you can write the IP address which you find over here. So let's see if it's uh, calculating or finding out the PLC. And we can see that shortly. So you can see I have a lot of devices connected. I have Siemens PLC, I have um, a Vintech device, I have several Shelly devices. It's my personal IP address for my P on my PC. This is my Edge device. There you can see Telemechanic Electric, that's triple two, that's my Schneider PLC. So you can find the PLC and mention the IP address here. And then if you want to use this port, this Ethernet port for programming, make sure you tick that. And I will tick Modbus as well, Ethernet IP I will do later. In Auto Discovery Protocol, it will automatically discover the protocols. Make sure once you do that, click on Apply. And then you have an option to configure Modbus TCP and Ethernet IP. This way we'll do that in the later videos. And you can also configure the second port, which is this one, for serial communication in case of that is Modbus. So this we will also do later on. Okay, so in this video, I just uh, do the IP address and enable the protocols. And then we go to programming because you see a cross here. We need to configure that. In programming, you will write the program. All right, now I will write a very simple program and you can see there is a crosshair, which means this needs to be configured. So it is by default in letter logic. So if you go to here on the left side tasks, you will see that the master task, master task is the task which has the main POU, main program, is already having a POU and it already having a ground, which is zero. So that's this run. So we will add some contacts and output coils in this run. It's by default letter. If you want to switch to instruction list, you can do that from here. Now this is instruction list, and here right now it's letter. And this is a rung body, and what are these things? I will come to that later as well. So here we stick to rung body and add a contact. And then this is my input, and then I can add an output coil in the end of the rung, okay? Rung from here to here is for inputs. So from this column to this column is for inputs. And then on the last you have an output. If you find this, like two less space if you have a lot of inputs what you can also do is you can add another column from here so if you click on plus it will extend your columns and you can make it as much as you want but i don't like to have such a width on my window because i don't have so many inputs i will just keep it to minimum now here i can add the symbol or i can add the address so in the symbol if i remember it was push button n01 so it automatically take the address i01 so let me just zoom it for you a little bit so now you have the address i0.1 and here in the symbol I can type red and have my output already because this is already linked in my configuration when we were writing the inputs and the outputs. And now you can see that it is used by user logic. Okay, it also shows the status. So my input is there, output is there. That's the simple logic I want to do for this video to show you how you can download this logic later onto your PLC. Now once the logic is done, you will see it's a green tick. There are no errors there. 
I can go to commission. Now in the commission, you can see already I have my IP address of the PLC. If you don't see that here, what you can do is you can type the IP address here and click on add, and then you will see your IP address of the PLC. And once the software detects the PLC, it will automatically enable the login button. So because I already have a PLC on my table, I can click on login, and this will log into my PLC. And once you logged in, doesn't mean the program is downloaded. You just logged into a PLC. You're just in the online mode, right? Now we have to download the logic. In this case, it is also showing you compare computer and uh, controller application. PC and controller applications are different. So we will download either from PC to PLC or PLC to PC. In this case, I will do PC to controller because I want to download this logic. So click on PC to controller, click OK, click OK. And now it is downloading my program to the PLC. Okay. And once it's downloaded, the next step is you have to start the controller. You have to uh, make it to run mode. So because every time when you download the program, it is in the stop mode by default. This is what the default settings are, although you can change that. But here I go and click on start controller, or I can click here as well. So if you're in this screen, you can click here. If you're in this screen, you can also click here. This will start the controller. Now my controller is running, program is downloaded, downloaded, and we are monitoring it. So right now you can see here it's showing false and output is also false. So I, what I can do is I can go there, press my i0.1 and it will actuate my first output. Okay, you can see the green button here which means, which means it's true. If I release, it's false. So I can monitor my PLC program, what is happening to my inputs here as well. Now, interesting part is if I want to now change from 0.1 to 0.2, I can do that while the PLC is in online mode. I will show you both ways. Let's say I want to now change the inputs. One way is you go to commission, you go to logout, go to programming, change that to 2, go back to commission, go login, and then you download it again. This is one way to do it. PC to controller, download. There we go. This is a traditional way when you want to up update the program with new inputs. So once it's downloaded, I can come back to programming again. And now I can go to run mode. So now it's i0.2. So it's my second input, which is actuating my output. All right. Now, one more thing is if I want to change, make the changes while PLC is in run mode, while PLC is online mode, I can do that as well. So in, in this case, I can double click here and now I will change it back to one and press enter. In this case, you will see the color changes. The color indicates that you made some online changes. It has to be downloaded to the PLC. So in this case, if I now, let's see if I can find this button here. No, it's not here. If I now go to commission, I will have a pop-up. The rung has been modified. Do you want to send the online changes to the controller? I will say yes send these changes to controller. Now the changes has been sent. So if I now come here 0.1, it's again my first input, it will actuate my output. So changes has been done, but we haven't made the backup yet. So we have to send to the controller and tell them this is the final backup. Click on that and then it will write to the controller. Now it's the final backup. This is what you have to do in the end as well. So there you go. So that's how you can write the information, write the PLC program to your PLC. Now, in case if you don't have a PLC, most of you, if you're watching, maybe want to work with simulators, what you can do is, let me just go log out. Now I am not logged into the PLC. I want to launch the simulator. In this case, I first recommend you to go to your configuration and go to the PLC Ethernet port and update the IP address. The IP address I recommend you to update with your Ethernet card IP address, which you can find by typing ipconfig and with this command, it will tell you the configuration of all Ethernet adapters. And I can see the IP address is this one, 192.168.0.110. I will change the IP address, press enter and apply. Go back to commission and I will see another IP address is coming. Select that one and having that selected, click on launch simulator. So this will launch my simulator. And why did I put the IP address of my Ethernet card? Because it will help you to do mod bus communication with the simulator without real PLC, which is a game changer. <laughs> so once you're downloaded, you can see the run LEDs blinking because the controller is not in start mode. You can start from here or from here. Let's do that from here. 
Now controller is running. You can see the status is updated here as well. Go back to your programming. And now if I want to actuate 0 0.1, which is this one, one here, I can actuate this input, it will actuate my output. Okay, pretty neat, right? Very easy to use simulator without any hassle. Just launch the simulator and working on the, start working on the simulator. You can also simulate other inputs because you have nine inputs. Also, you can simulate the analog inputs as well. Okay, we will come to that later on. So I will stop the simulator now and I can quickly jump back to my real PLC. I can just go to login because programming is already same inside. And now again, I can do it from my real PLC. Okay. So this was about how you can work with uh, EcoStruction Machine Expert Basic and how you can download the program to the PLC. And one more thing, I can also show you how to, you can upload the program from PLC. So in case if my if I put here, let's say I first go and log out and here I put six. So this is, let's say a program inside, but I want to program from the PLC now. I can go to commission and this is my PLC. Click on login. You can do the same with the simulator as well. And then controller to PC. So now I'm extracting from my PLC to my PC. This I can do, click on yes. And then it's done. You can go to programming and you can see now it's again 0 0.1. And this will going to work. Okay, so that's how you can do forth and back of programming. You can download to PLC or get from PLC to your computer as well. This was in the commissioning, okay? So feel free to use the real PLC if you want. If you have a budget, you can buy it. I think it costs somewhere around 250 euros in the European price. If you want to work with a simulator, you can also do that as well. Feel free to choose whatever you like. So this was the basic programming lesson. In the next video, we will understand more about the tasks. We will do some more programming lessons. So get ready. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.